Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I'm doing a little project, and this is one I'm doing for a viewer that contacted me a while back, asked if I'd help out on a project, and I said, yeah, this looks like an interesting little thing to do, so uh, here we are. Uh, I'm doing this for Bruce Jackson. Bruce lives up in the Vancouver, Canada area, and what he's got, or what he sent me, was an arbor off of a General table saw. So this was made by General, this model 350 10-inch table saw. He took the arbor out. This is the part that the saw blade goes up onto and runs. And he's wanting to make a modified version of this to do, uh, give him a little more blade support. He um, also sent along this blade support washer. Basically this goes on the end of the arbor and it comes up against the saw blade. But what he's wanting is, is the flange that's built into the arbor to be the same diameter as this larger one. And it'll just give his table saw a little bit more support, be able to make a finer cut. So we talked about how he wanted to go about doing this. The easy thing I think would have been if we had just come in here and taken a piece of metal and, and made the, the arbor uh, or the flange as a separate piece and just kind of put them together. But it's clear that this original piece is all one piece. It's made out of a solid piece of steel. I suspect that uh, what they probably did was they had a part that was dropped forged so that you ended up with a piece that wasn't a solid piece of metal that they had to machine this out. It would have had, uh, you know, a smaller diameter on this end and this end, but it would have had a big ring here in the middle. And that would have been a much more efficient way without as much waste to have to turn one of these out. Unfortunately, uh, drop forging a blank really is not an option for me. So uh, we went with a piece of solid metal. I ordered a piece of 4140 steel. This is a three and five eighths inch in diameter. I had to order a foot of it pretty pricey little chunk of metal right here I'll tell you guys and um, previously I have come in and I have roughed out uh, the metal from this right here just doing some rough turning to get a roughed out piece and it's still well oversized uh, but we'll be making the whole arbor from this piece right here um, and full disclosure I videoed doing the rough turning and I was planning on doing a video. Unfortunately, I had some technical problems uh, with a lot of the video that was in that particular um, segment and I was really unable to use it. Uh, very frustrated with that. Um, I did get a few clips out of there that I could use of me doing the rough turning, but most of it was not usable. So you guys were kind of picking up uh, with the rough turning already done. A little bit about the part. We've got, um, there's a thread section on the end. It is kind of unusual or kind of interesting, I guess, in that some of the measurements on here are uh, in inches and some of the stuff is in metric. So I don't remember offhand what this thread is. I want to say it's five eighths inch fine thread. There's a nut that comes up on here. Then you got this shaft here that the bearings uh, ride on. And this is actually metric, uh, the shaft diameter is. And then you go back over here and it's a five eighths inch Acme left hand thread that the uh, nut comes up on. So got a mixture of uh, measurements in there. No big deal. I'm pretty much going to make it in inches because that's the way my machines and m most of my measuring stuff is set up on. So uh, that's what we're going to work off of. We'll just convert this over to inches and uh, let her roll. So um, anyway, there you go. That's kind of what we're after. Here's my blank. Like I said, we've already kind of rough turned that to get it close to diameters and shapes, but uh, we've still got a lot of finishing work to do this. And with that, let's go over to the lathe and get started on it. I've got my lathe kind of set up for turning between centers and for turning between centers often what I will do is uh, just take a piece of metal here. I've got a piece of just round stock and what I'll do is I'll turn my compound on the lathe to 30 degrees um, which will give me a 60 degree included angle which is the angle for a, a um, for turning between centers for a center drive and I just true it up each time I do it on the lathe because every time you put something in this three dog chuck, it doesn't run perfectly true. But by me just freshening it up on the lathe, I know it's running true. It just takes a couple of minutes to do that. And uh, I got my part, I got my lathe dog on here. What we will do is we will come in here, put the center on both sides and let me pull this side up. We'll put that in there. Tighten it up, lock it down, 
And now you see I'm running between those two, those two points on the spindle. And again, the nice thing here is, is that I can easily just flip this thing over and it's going to be running perfectly concentrically true between those center points. Uh, so it's really a nice setup when you're working on something where you got to work on both ends of a shaft and you don't want to have to worry about, uh, you know, putting in a four jaw chuck or something and, and doing it up. Back in the old days, uh, they didn't have a lot of chucks on machines and a lot of your turning work was done between centers. Uh, another nice thing about turning between centers is in a factory setting, uh, they could have a, one machine set up to do one operation. They could just take the part off of one and go put it on another machine that's running between centers and it would just match up perfect every single time. So it actually was used a lot in production work as well. We don't use between centers as much in today's world, uh, but sometimes in a project like this, it still makes sense. So what I'm gonna start out by doing is I wanna get the length of this uh, shaft exactly right. I need to go get my measurement again. We need to face off the front of this uh, piece here to get to our first uh, measurement there. First thing I need to look at here is the length from the end of the shaft to the shoulder back here. And it's 4.325 inches. And guys, I'll just go ahead and tell you, I'd already measured this whenever I did the uh, rough turning. So I got that dimension right uh, already. So we don't have to worry about that. If I needed to adjust it, how I did adjust it was just by facing this face uh, to get the length exactly right uh, when I was doing the, the rough turning. Next thing I wanna do is we got this little bit of a, round spot in here. There's actually some flats on there where you can put a wrench on there. I need to start cutting off uh, the material to make that little feature in there. And we'll get started on that right now. Because we need to cut this little shoulder down here. That is 1.175 inches in diameter and it goes in 200 thousandths um, in there. So I think what we'll do is we're just gonna come over here and I'm gonna probably just go in about 175 thou. We'll just slowly eat away on it. Once we get it down to the depth, I'll face it to the proper depth. Uh, that's the game plan. So what I'm gonna do is just come in here and touch off on that shoulder there. And then using a uh, dial indicator, a little magnetic mount dial indicator, I'm gonna come in 175 thou right there. I'm gonna make a, a mark on there. We got a little run out in that outside diameter. So we're just gonna come in here and start whittling that away. Actually just feeding this by hand here and I'm watching my indicator over here to stop at 175 each time so you can kind of see what's going on we just dial in I've got this zeroed so right there we're kind of our right there we're just touching that outside and I'm watching my indicator to go to depth. So one full circle is 100 thousandths and I'm going to 75. That leaves me 25 thou to clean up on it. And we'll just kind of keep working on this until we get that down to the diameter we need. I'm just gonna take a quick measurement here and see where we're at on this diameter. I don't wanna get too aggressive and get past it. So we're at a two inches, 100 thou. I'm going to, basically I got almost a, another inch to take off of the diameter there. I 
I know it looks like I'm getting close there, but you got to remember this shaft here is uh, still well, way oversized. So um, we've still got to turn a lot up, down on that. And I've got about 50 thou to come off of there. I'll just dial that in. And we're right on the money there. Next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna get this uh, shaft down here taken down a little closer to the finished diameter. I'm gonna leave it still just a little bit large. It's uh, about 668 and a half, it looks like, just roughly. I think if I take it down to about three quarters of an inch, we'll be fine. Right now, we're basically at an inch, so I got a 250,000, I'm gonna take off of that. I'll come in here and touch off. Go ahead and take another 100 thou off of there. take another 40 off. We're still going to be oversized here. I'm got leaving some material to take off of it later on. We'll fine tune it then. thing I want to do is finish cleaning up this face. I'm just going to go down and face the whole thing and I'm going to get a good measurement and then we'll, it should be 20 thou more is what we need, but Yep, 20 thou more. I'm just gonna dial that right in. And we'll go down there and uh, face that right off. Check this outside diameter. We're currently at uh, 3.6 roughly. I need to be at 3.549. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that to the final um, diameter. That run out on there is driving me batty. I wanna clean it up. Because it was running out, I wanted to uh, just clean it up enough to get a good measurement. 
and we've got about 40 more thou to come off of it. And we're gonna make a bird's nest. I'm just gonna let it finish cutting, guys. I don't like it when it does that, but we'll deal with it. Let me get a pair of pliers and pull that stringy crap out. 